Hey, what's up guys? It's Foster and tonight we're installing this white line rear sway bar on my WRX so that we can go a little bit faster at the track. So I think I finally found the perfect event for me to take the WRX2 out on the track to give it a shakedown. This event's called the Subaru Speed Expo and it's happening in a couple of months from now and I've got a lot of work to do to this car to get it ready to go out on track. One of the first mods I want to do to it is this bigger rear sway bar and the main reason why I want to do this mod to the car is because it helps all wheel drive cars understeer less on corner entry and corner exit. Also gives the car a bit more rear grip and all that's going to translate to a faster lap time out of the track and more fun too because you can get on gas a little bit sooner you're not waiting so long for that understeer. So I'm definitely really excited for this mod and I've done it to my other Subarus in the past always with great results so I have a feeling this is going to be a nice upgrade for the WRX. One reason why I went with the white line sway bar is the fact that I really like all their suspension bits but also the fact that this is three-way adjustable so I'm gonna start out in the middle setting which is a good balance between stiff and soft and if I feel like it needs adjusting I can either adjust it this way if I want it to be softer or put it on this notch if I want it to be stiffer so we'll start out in the middle we'll see how it feels on track and then it's pretty easy to adjust if we need to make any changes. Since I have the pleasure of working on a high mileage WRX with a lot of rust, I'm going to use some penetrating oil. You can use PB Blaster or WD-40, but this is an important step so that you don't have any seized bolts. I'm going to start by removing these end links and then we can disconnect the stock sway bar. You could use a pass through wrench to loosen this nut holding the end link here, but I'm just going to blast it with an impact and we'll see what happens. So that did not work as I was worried. So now I'm going to actually have to use a pass through wrench and an Allen key. Oh no, I don't know if this is actually working. So change of plans, I'm not gonna try and keep fighting this end link. I'm just gonna drop the sway bar and the end link all as one piece since I've got the new white line end links anyway. I think it's gonna make this project go a lot quicker. Next you can remove this sway bar bushing mount with a 12 millimeter socket. Seems like these bolts are actually going, so we're getting somewhere. So this white line sway bar comes with this bushing lubricant and you're gonna wanna put a little bit of that inside these polyurethane bushings before you install them on the sway bar. There's a little bit of a gap in it and then you just slide it right on. Well, the good news is since I had to remove these exhaust hangers to get the old sway bar out, it's a lot easier to feed this new white line sway bar and get it in place. To hold the sway bar in place, we're gonna loosely attach these bushing mounts. I'm just reusing the OEM hardware in bracket with the new white line polyurethane bushing. So I've got my new white line end links here and I match them to the same length as the OEM end links. That's gonna be probably what I figure a good place to start. What's cool about these two is the fact that they're super beefy. They're substantially thicker than the OEM end links and that's because of the increased load we're gonna be putting through this sway bar. You'll actually snap your stock end links if you don't upgrade to some aftermarket ones like these white line ones. So you definitely wanna upgrade your end links when you do a sway bar as well. So I went to install my new end links on the driver's side control arm and I wondered why they were such a tight fit compared to the passenger side. And then I looked at the control arm a little bit more and look at that you guys, this control arm is completely bent. For reference, here's what it's supposed to look like on the passenger side. 
So obviously somebody's had a fun time in this car and probably hit a curb or something like that. And now we're gonna need some new lower control arms. Not a big deal since I did lower this car with coilovers recently, I was planning on getting adjustable lower control arms anyway, but man, that is crazy. So after a bit of a struggle, I got the new white line end link installed on the driver's side. That bent control arm definitely made this project a lot harder, but now you can install your new white line hardware and go ahead and just get that loosely put in place. We're making good progress. We got the bushing mounts tightened down and we got our new hardware tightened down for the end links going to the control arms. And I double checked to make sure that all the locking collars are tightened down as well on the end links. So everything's looking pretty buttoned up here. Same thing on the passenger side. I've got it all tightened down as well as these locking collars too. You wanna leave a small three to four millimeter gap on those so that there's no contact. And then later on, you should check all this stuff under full compression and full droop. But for right now, we've got everything installed on the sway bar itself. Now it's time to add the support brackets. So I got a little ahead of myself earlier when I tightened down these rear bushing mounts. Now I'm gonna just loosen them up a bit so we can install our new rear braces. So we've got the new brace installed. Now I can torque down this nut that holds it to the lower control arm. And the torque spec for this is 89 foot pounds. That pretty much does it for the install. We've got the new white line rear sway bar as well as those bigger end links installed on the WRX. And I'm hoping that that really helps the car out with having less understeer as well as a little bit better rotation out on track. But we'll find out in October when I take the car out to its first track day. And from there we can dial it in too. So if the car's not performing how I want, I can give it a little bit more rear sway bar, stiffen it up or I can soften it and we can play around with the different settings. If you guys like this WRX content, give me a like and hit that subscribe button because I've got a bunch more mods planned for this car and we're gonna keep transforming it into a daily driver that you can take to the track. So it's gonna be a pretty cool build. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.